I remember my first day uh, with Nina was 1975 in her AFI class directing the actor and it was just like a whole new world opened up to me because I'd always I'd been sort of afraid of actors because I didn't know exactly how you got them to um, perform consistently with what you wanted and, and she sort of opened up the door to me of how actors think and it was really incredibly valuable. I remember the, one of the first projects or first uh, assignments was to bring in a personal item that was important to you in some way and you learned about partnering and what it was to partner and it was just an inanimate object and it was and it was incredible how open and honest people's work was in this first exercise because Nina sort of pushed pushed you to really go to some different kinds of places than we were used to at that age. Nina was so open, so honest in a a way that I just wasn't actually used to people being. I never had a teacher like that before that. And dealing with real life, I, I just felt like what she taught in her class extended way beyond acting. And it was about life and, and how, why people are the way they are, what is a full life, what is honesty, you know, integrity, all of those things that um, is so much about a good performance, about being honest and true and trying to find truth in whatever the material is. And, she, and, and it extended way past acting to me. I went into withdrawal at the end of the year and I didn't get to see Nina anymore. So I called her up and when I started getting some jobs to do and she said, well, you can come over to my house and we can work together on the... And so I, I continued seeing her professionally through many, 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 many years. And I loved those. Uh, in the midst of crazy pre-production, which it often is, I just have this idyllic time that I would spend in Nina's living room before making films. And we would talk about, go through the script, you know, breaking it down and talk about the actors who I was casting, what she knew about them and, and, and giving me advice about how to work with different actors. And so she always was helpful um, beyond the class in terms of just giving me advice about working with various actors, specific actors, and also the, the material and what this character mm -hmm. really needs. Before I got into um, the Hollywood filmmaking, I was doing educational films. And that's what I did right out of um, school. And after working with Nina, I would go with my little educational film script to Nina's house and we would break it down. So it might be about how to you know, use the reference section of the library, but we were working, and, and I was learning about acting through these, these films because I did films with casting and dr drama um, because I was using them to learn, learn the craft. And it was great having Nina um, guide me through all of those. I, I knew so little about acting when I started working with her and I really feel like everything I ever learned came from her. So I'm a total disciple <laughs> of Nina. I always break down the script the way Nina taught me because that is so useful. And even if many actors don't need anything, they don't, you know, they don't necessarily require it, but you never know when they will. And if you've already thought it through, you don't have a lot of time for discussion on the set. Um, 
certainly doing episodic shows. Mm -hmm. and, and yes, I have had actors come to me and say, I don't, I, I don't know what to do with this. And it's only because I've done that homework in advance that I have an answer right away. Because if you don't have something right away, it's going to be harder to convince them. But if they, if you come out with something and it, it just, it's a, helps them to know that you've got it. For Charlize in Mighty Joe Young, it was a lot about partnering with an inanimate object as it was in that, just because it was a special effect. And I think I, I got everything that I knew about it, certainly from Nina, and I passed on what I could. Nina would always say that you, you have to watch out on the first day of uh, shooting with your male lead because it, uh, there could be some testing going on. Jack Balance was, um, he was so, um, I, I had heard horror stories about Jack actually before casting him. And I was, we, we really wanted him for the role. But I heard such bad things about him that we decided not to offer the role to him. I was just a little freaked out about things I'd heard. Finally, we just couldn't think of anybody better than Jack for it, so we offered it to him. Had a great meeting down at the Four Seasons. No problems, first day, first scene, first rehearsal. It was in a corral, it was his entrance into the movie. And he um, comes into this corral where a cowboy's been harassing Helen Slater and he throws a knife down at his the cowboy's crotch and Billy and he says uh, he says you don't that you never do that and, and Billy says yes see yeah make sure you don't do that and then Jack has to look out over it Billy and Billy says oh I'm sorry I thought we were on the same side and Jack didn't look at Billy after the rehearsal and, uh, at that point in the rehearsal and I said Jack after that, at Billy's line, if you could just give a glance over at him. And he said, I don't do glances. I said, oh, well, that's okay. Just a look over at that time is fine. And he just went ballistic. And really, really, he had a, just a, a violent reaction. He said he was going to walk off the show. We were in this corral, and the whole cast and crew just moved away and left Jack and me alone in the corral. So it was a good metaphor for our little showdown first day. And Jack, I, I said, I, I really hope you don't walk off this film. He said, I've walked off better films than this. And I said, well, there's a whole generation that hasn't seen your work and it would be great if you do this because I think they'll really appreciate you in this role. And he just sort of stormed off finally. We got everybody back. And I wasn't going to rehearse it again because I just thought, oh, just shoot it and see what happens. And he did the glance. It was great. And he, later in the day, he was sitting next to me and took his cowboy hat off and hit me in the leg and said, first day jitters. And I never had any other problem with him, and he was great for the rest of the film. And you really have to be... Um, sure of yourself and, and, and do your homework so that you're not um, grasping at straws because you want to set the right tone. And setting the right tone was uh, very important and Nina always stressed it from day one to be ready and, and to... And I think that what I got from her, I mean, she was always so honest and and actors who've been around are very intuitive and you can't BS them. They are honest, they know honesty, and you have to be honest with them and uh, not try to pull the rug over their eyes <laughs> because they'll see through it. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think I, I always got that from her that it, actors deserve to be tre treated with honesty. It's interesting too, there have been actors who I've worked with who studied with Nina, like Charlie Martin Smith or um, 
various people who, who you know, even knew just from the way I approached things, they would say, did you study with Nina? I, I miss Nina so much. She, she was always, she was a dear friend who I just enjoyed talking with because she always had a very strong point of view and never kept it from you. <laughs> so it was always just fun to, to talk to her. She had so much passion and she would start talking about the movie she saw last night or, or uh, somebody she ran into and it would be, I mean, there was no, no sense of any frailty coming in from her because she was a strong, strong woman with a great, great point of view and I, I always, I will always miss that but always treasure it having memories of her.